All right, I started recording. My basement is crowded today, right? There's literally, literally hundreds of people here. This hand sweet. Uh, I run a uh, Linux-based operating system on my laptop, just like I run on my desktop computer. <coughs> this, hand's, this hand's pretty reasonable. We don't have double uh, ruby for the Visage here, if we want to play that, but I think I'm going Sapphire on one, so we can Arcane Focus on two, and we'll probably just do this on three. Which will probably tunnel the Reese on three, in all honesty. Subterranean Spy. I love the design of this card so much. While this is tunneled, we get to look at their hand. And the best part about tunneling is that they don't know which card we have tunneled, so they don't know that we're looking at their hand. on Arcane Focus here. Awesome, man, man. Looking for shards. Dig, dig, dig. Thinking about Fissure Smiths. Nah. They're, I mean, they're, they're better in different matchups. Like, this this matchup, uh, Fissure Smiths probably better. But I think there's going to be a number of matchups where uh, Visage is really good. I played a really sweet game. Uh, the game I played on the bus against uh, Blood Sapphire Spiders. I tweeted a screenshot of Visage just like going nuts. Went super wide with it. It was phen phenomenal. So turn three, Tunnel Reese is a little bit slow. Hopefully that's going to be going to be good enough. <coughs> Ideally you went on two, but double tap shard opener did not allow allow that to happen. Does so Hex have any plans of making a mobile client? They did hit that. They did hit that uh, goal on their Kickstarter, but I'm not sure. Uh, when when the timeline is on that, if at all. I assume it's going to happen at some point. G. Smith, sure. A crackling Bolt in our hand. I think I want to tunnel the Reese on our next turn as opposed to Crackling Bolting this. We can let him have one piece of cheese. I just want to, like, get Reese into play ASAP. I need another Ruby Shard here. Okay, so, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And uh, Tunnel of Reese. Especially since we have the Azure Fate Sorceress in our hand already. Opponent's deck is, like, is likely pretty light on interaction for Azure Fate. So we'll just, like, Tunnel tunnel Reese here. And then next turn we'll go Shard, Crackling Bolt, the Artisanal Cheese Smith, Tunnel the Subterranean Spy. And then hopefully we can set up the Visage plus Azure Fate to combo him when these guys come off tunneling. <laughs> I mean, the uh, the framework that they're using has... This is all built using the Unity engine, and Unity engine has full mobile support, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a mobile client at, at some point. It's like chat isn't updating on the stream overlay. No, no, I didn't turn the chat off. Let's, uh, where is it? There we go. Thank you for that. I'm working with, I'm working with only one monitor here, so I have, I have limited things I can see on screen at any given point. This is a deck that won the Fate Cup. Spell Shield is such an interesting mechanic. It's really not. I'm a liar. So that deals two to me when it comes in. 
This is going to crack me for two, I assume, here. <coughs> the question is whether or not I want to burn his dome. I think I want to just burn his dome. My resources are going to be pretty tight here for the next... Uh, The resources are going to be kind of tight here for the next few turns, so I think I'm just like spending my burn killing, hitting his face here, and then next turn we'll do what I said with uh, Tunnel, Subterranean, Spy, plus Crackling Bolt as guy. <coughs> uh, Hide, there is a workaround for the store crashing when you're running it through Wine, it's listed on the AppDB page. Um, I, I can confirm that the workaround listed on there works. Oh, another Azure Fate Sorceress. Wow, so he's gonna be like super dead here. And you can buy you can buy plats from the Game Forge website. Yeah, I hope they rotate the I hope they rotate the spell shield gem here sometime soon. So what has he got in his hand? He's got Wellspring, Periwinkle, Eye of Creation. Oh, he's got Periwinkle, huh? Maybe maybe I was a little bit Maybe I was a little bit too aggressive using my cr using my burn when I did. Yeah, I, Periwinkle didn't occur to me. <coughs> I probably want a Crackling Bolt the Periwinkle more than I want to Crackling Bolt more than I want to Crackling Bolt uh, his G-Smith. So I think I'm just going to play Visage here. Do I want to ship? Yeah, I think I want to... Chat froze up again. That's sad. Alright, I'm just going to kill that chat box and use the normal... Normal Twitch chat for today. Where is it? That's... That's going to have to do. It's a little sad, but it looks looks less nice. But we'll make we'll make do with it. <coughs> All right, we don't have a nice chat box. That's fine. <laughs> Do I want to trade two damage for two damage here? Essentially, he might. Yeah, there's no way he blocks. Yeah, I think I'm gonna trade two damage for damage. We got like double, double, double Azure Fate Sorcerers in our hand, so we can probably just race him here. The Reese is gonna be one turn behind, but <coughs> depending on like what he hits with his Eye of Creation, we probably just kill him here. We do have this is Visage Cannon, basically. Yep. <coughs> Let's zoom in again here. Look at that. Look at that. The sacrifices you make with your airport. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> it's for the people, though, really. All right, so he ramps up here with Wellspring. Um, yeah, I think we're probably going to win this race. Because I, I bet with us just having Visage on the table, he periwinkles, um, he periwinkles next turn and doesn't just jam the Eye of Creation. If he just, like, jams the Eye of Creation, we could, we could get into some trouble here. But... I think I think we're probably winning this race. <laughs> so during his end step, we're gonna Azure Fate Sorcerer, which will deal two to him, and then on our turn, the Subterranean Spy comes off of tunneling and will play the other Azure Fate in response to it. And that's going to give us a uh, visage when it comes off of tunneling. And then the Azure Fate's going to... Ooh, he just eyed for three. Well, that's not stellar. Hopefully this is a big fat brick. If he hits like... <laughs> well, that's that's the opposite of a brick. Uh, are we dead? Wow. Opponent, opponent definitely prayed to RNGs Jesus this morning. Not gonna lie, the uh, the salt's a little real here. That's that's obscene.
<coughs> Actually just dead. Alright, would I have gotten to kill him if that I bricked? If the I... If the I bricked, uh, we'd have done... Two... Into f we'd have done two into four into six, so that's uh, six, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. We would have gotten to nineteen our opponent, and he would have been at seventeen. <coughs> so, yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll concede here because we are very dead. All right, continue. What do we got here? <laughs> I probably want the extra crackling bolt, possibly the extra time ripple. Uh, visage doesn't seem particularly good in this match, but I think we want to just like turn into more of a control deck essentially. Like a control deck with a combo finish at this top end. I think I want the Electro Fries and then a single verdict. That doesn't seem unreasonable. Let's try let's try this configuration. Even even the opponent's a little bit like, yep, that's that's realistic. <laughs> I mean, I've creation does make for some interesting games. It's a big, it's a big splashy type of effect that people like to play. I would like to play first. It reminds me of Hearthstone. It definitely looks like a Hearthstone card. Um. <coughs> I think I'm supposed to keep this. Counter magic's pretty good in this matchup, and we've got like double arcane focus to like hit our hit our shard drops. <coughs> Watch us just like brick off and die, I'm sure, but. <coughs> the fact that he's got Clux main is probably bad for us. We're kind of, kind of like a control burn deck, so like. <laughs> uh, jeez. Opponent hits three cards with Eye of Creation, we can't cantrip into a shard. Feels. third brick. Do we brick four and five? I'm just going to concede if we brick on this and play another game. We're not destined to win this match if we miss on shards here. Oh, you know, so you're saying, so you're saying there's a chance. Is this still alive? The bandwidth looks to be dropping off. Just buffering. Yeah, we might not make this happen. That yeah, was worth a try. I mean, I'm at least going to play this match, I guess. Since I'm playing it anyways, I'll record it. <coughs> I 
Airport Hex is in fact touch and go. Uh, Savage. Well, if we run a couple of shards off here, we might have a chance. Like we draw, we draw running shards the next two turns. We can, we can tunnel, tunnel these guys, and then Azure Fate Sorceress in response to them coming down. If we hit shards. <coughs> This is probably an Azure Fate Sorceress, I'd assume, with spell shield and damage. Uh, probably just gonna get run out of this game. Oh, we hit the shard. That's pretty good. Tunnel this in a world where we don't just die. Uh, his hand's really good. We got Cluck, Sage, Balthazar's gonna be kind of annoying. Oh, so he plays next turn. I suppose we've got counter magic up now at least. Crocs a good draw. So he's jamming, he's jamming Cluck, which we can't interact with after it comes down. Which is, you know, unfortunate. The spell shield gem is just like the worst design in this game. We do just have triple counter magic, so that's nice. No attack is interesting. I wonder what he's playing around there. Any is there anything you could possibly be playing around there? So our best shot to win this game is that he just doesn't... He plays around counter magic by just not playing anything this turn. He plays Cheese Smith, we just let that resolve. Yeah, that that's fine. That happens. Hopefully he just jams Cheese Smith here and not a Fetty. If he plays a Fetty, we're forced to counter. Otherwise, we're basically just dead. Now I have to just hold up counter magic for the rest of the game and hope these two troops can get there, which isn't terribly likely. We're losing this race pretty badly. Missing stumbling on charge drops was not not pretty this game. If we would have gotten to tunnel something on two, we'd have been okay, but the fact that we like missed a beat here and like couldn't play our Azure Fate the turn on four, we had to wait till five because we missed a shard drop, like just not stellar. Also, I'm not even supposed to attack with a subterranean spy. I want to hold it back to trade with the Azure Fate Sorceress. Yeah, that card's fine. Digital Cheese Smith is. That's also fine. I'll play this, trade with the Azure Fate Sorceress.
So if we rip a shard here, we can ripple the cheese smith and ship for eight. We're dead in two to this cluck. That's unfortunate. His guys don't have. His guys don't have crush anymore though. I think I crackling bolt here, and then ship for eight, and then if he. Oh, you know what? This this was bad. If he plays Balthazar, I get into trouble here. I, I don't know why it went through my mind that I could... I just had to go through my mind that I could time ripple his cluck in response to Balthazar, but his thing is still spell shield even though the Azure Fate Sorceress is gone, because that's how Hex works. I just had the wrong line in my head. So, hopefully he plays Croc here. That's that's what we want to see. We want we want a Croco to hit the bit, hit the board, not a Balthazar. Because if he crocs, we just ripple it in response to the fight trigger. Balthazar, however, we really can't do anything about. He'll just gain four, draw four. Please be Croco. Please, we can beat the Croco. We cannot beat the Balthazar. Yeah, sweet. So Croco comes down in response to its fight trigger. We time ripple it. Because it does not have spell shield since we tripped Azure Fate Sorceresses off. And then uh, he's dead to burn here, actually, or Crackling Bolt, because we've got 8 power and he's at 9. So maybe we're going to get out of this. Another subterranean spy is not going to do it. A shard there would have even been good, because then we would have been able to activate our champion power and then be able to attack with both of these. Now I have to hold back subterranean spy to block his Cluckdon, so he's going to 4. I'll pass the turn here. It's possible I'm also supposed to only ship with a subterranean spy here because I can trade the hypno scientist with his Glockton. So his hand is uh, Belthcroc. We know both of those. So, snap off counter magic on that. And then if he attacks the Collect on here, he's still dead to burn, Crackling Bolt, and Time Repulse. So yeah, so no attacks there, sweet trust. Okay, so... I'm gonna play this, and get a Dwarf Bot, or a Worker Bot, whatever it's called. We can kill Subterranean Spy, we know his last card. So, yeah, I think we just ship with... Well, let's see how big of a thing we get here. This gives him information when we block, but it gives us information too. So we get a 4-4. Four, four. That's not bad. Uh, I think we ship with both of these. I'm pretty pretty okay with him uh, eating this and then just jumping here. I think that's probably what he's going to eat the 3-2 and then jump. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tunnel Subterranean Spy. And then uh, he's dead on board, and we have uh, Counter Magic up here. So it looks like we're actually going to get out of this game. Uh, he drew Cheesemith here, but we've time rippled this croc, which means it costs him six, so he can't play both the cards in his hand. So we're just going to counter magic whichever one of you plays and then kill him. So this should prompt a concession because he's dead on board. Yep. This is a matchup where Fissure Smith would be very good. I think I want some Fissure Smith and some Trend Morgifies in my 75. Do I want to change how I board it at all? I don't think I do. The one Verdict might be bad. Maybe we just want like a Crimson Bolt here. Like, Verdict counters like exactly the Eye of Creation and that's it. Maybe our opponent will have a turn to stumble around a little bit here. Or we can just like tunnel a Resun to would be ideal. Love, love to tunnel me a Resun to. Well, the hand tunnels resun too. I can't possibly mulligan, right? We could we could die with this hand before we do anything. Alright, no no howling bird on one's good for us. But I think I think this hand is just like our, our like most obnoxious possible start. So we're definitely keeping it. Crackling Bolt's good. Crackling Bolt is a turn three play to like care, kill a periwinkle or something else that can get out of control. Um, things worth noting is that because I've boarded the visages out, we um we don't have any double double ruby cards in my deck, so we only need double sapphire and single single ruby to play all of our cards. Uh, at this point, 
So these limes, these limestones don't make thresholds once um, once I tunnel the reese, but we don't actually need the thresholds, right? I think I'd much rather save these for the upside of making worker bots with them. Hopefully his turn three play is just like Cheesmith, and then we we go to our turn and go like Shard of Invocation for Sapphire, Crackling Bolt, or Cheesmith. Like just like work our way towards our Tetzod activation plus our Azure Paid Sorceress. Sweet. Uh, this... His hand is slow, so like our slow hand might just be enough to, to beat him. A second Azure Fate Sorcerer should hopefully mean that this game is very over. Especially with two Crackling Bolts to push our charges up. So we get that. Crackling Bolt, your dork. He's going to need a lot of, a lot of Cluck Dons to get out of this game. So that takes us to four. Another thing worth noting is that these Limestones, uh, when, even though they say they make Worker Bots, when Reese is in play, they make... Um, when Reese is in play, they make a random robot after Reese is untunneled. So Howling Brave, sure. I'm going to kill that next turn. Who's, uh, makes the thing? So he must not have... Is he playing a red card here? No? Okay, that's interesting. Burn is a fantastic draw. I'm trying to go ahead and play this out. I think I'm just burning his guy. Although I suppose... I suppose I could just, like, end step Azure Fate, untap, second Azure Fate, activate Tetsot. That doesn't seem awful. He could, like, Eternal Sage me, but that doesn't seem great. We're two turns off of playing the Reese, so do I want to, like, put myself a turn behind to, like, take him up? Yeah, I think I do. Let's burn, let's burn this dork. Do I want to Crackling Bolt him? I suppose... I could Crackling Bolt this and then burn something that he plays. Yeah, I like that. So if he plays like a Periwinkle here, I can burn it. I should... Am I supposed to activate this and just start beating him down? Yeah, probably. This is bad if he plays troops out, but if he doesn't play a Fatty here, we have a 4-4 now to just start attacking him. So that could have done 8 direct damage, so hopefully that doesn't bite us. So if he plays something, we can burn here. Okay, we can't burn it, so... I'll just come back to our turn. And he's not blocking with that, so this is gonna, this Rock Elemental is going to get at least 4 points of damage on this attack. Okay, let's we'll start out on Arcane Focus here. Wouldn't mind finding, like, Counter Magic. Alright, Ask and you shall receive. We are going to play this out for no no threshold or anything because we want the option to Azure Fate Sorceress if he plays something we don't need to counter magic. It's possible killing the Howling Brave that one turn was a little bit too aggressive and I should have just like taken that turn to stick to Azure Fate Sorceress, but we'll see. We're in a, we're in a pretty good spot. Do I want to counter magic that? So let's think about this. It also blocks wall form, so yeah, I'm going to counter magic this. And then uh, next turn, uh, Reese comes in. In response to the Reese hitting the stack, we go ahead and we play Azure Fate Sorceress. And then he's taking two from the Azure Fate Sorceress, four from our Reese coming into play, and then the Reese attacks. So he's taking like 14 next turn. So the Reese comes off. In response, we play Azure Fate Sorceress. Azure Fate does two when she comes in. Reese will do four when he comes in and he has speed. He's going to make a robot. So if we hit a sweet robot, your opponent could actually die. This if we hit a robot with uh, three or more power that triggers Azure Fate Sorcerer since we have this burn in our hand. All right, opponent is very likely just dead unless they combo kill us next turn. They could like have a Nuts Eye of Creation if we miss on this, this Reese trigger. I'm going to go ahead and put a stop during my end step, so that way, if the Reese Trigger's robot to kill him, we can burn it. Oh, yeah, the Reese robot alone just kills him. Sweet. Got it. And we 5 of the gauntlet. All right. Um, since streaming live didn't work, you all are watching this on uh, YouTube, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, sign off and get some work done here at the airport, as opposed to playing Hex since we can't do it live. So thanks for hanging out. Um, I, I guess before I sign off, I'll go ahead and update update the Azure Cannon deck with the cards that I forgot existed. So I want to load Azure Cannon. So I want uh, some copies of 
transmorgified in the 75, I think, and cut subterranean spine jags from the main uh, time ripple. And I had some crackling bolts in the main as well. So I think I'm going to split ripple and trans... I think I'm just going to do like cowards, coward split all around, transmog... I'm going to put two Transmog, two Crackling Bolt, two Time Ripple. Just like Coward splits all around. And then in the reserves, I'm just going to have more of more of what's good here. I don't think... I, we Obviously, we can't have that many Crackling Bolts. I don't think I want four Crackling Bolts in the 75. Maybe I don't want four Crimson Bolts either. I definitely want another Transmog here in the board. I think I want another time ripple as well. Just like the the tempo, the tempo you get on time ripple is very, very, very powerful. Maybe with that many, I don't need four four crimson bolts anymore. I wouldn't mind like a a, a Zygmunt scheme in here somewhere. It's possible that one of those one of those on the board is reasonable. I might also just want four crackling bolts. That card's pretty powerful in this deck. Like the matches where it's good, like generating charges towards our champion is powerful. So, I think I'm going to put one one game here on the board, give that a try, see how it feels. I also just like have another Electrofry. This card's sweet because it's Reach and it kills Runeir Hierophant and all of the Rhinoceroses that it might have made if you kill it, if you kill it quickly enough. The game can kill it right off the bat though. I think we're gonna try one game. All right, folks. Thanks for thanks for watching this this one-off match here on YouTube. While we finished this gauntlet with uh, five-o. If you didn't uh, catch the other four matches in this gauntlet, you can check the previous video for for that as well. So, thanks for watching, folks, and uh, see you on stream soon, hopefully.